Hey everyone, here we have the Dell Latitude 3420. Now, I'm coming at you today on our B camera, which happens to be an iPhone, because somebody in the studio forgot to bring the camera cards in. It was me. Anyway, um, so we got a lot to talk about, not a lot of time, so let's dive right into it. The Dell Latitude happens to be Dell's sort of like business-oriented laptop. It's really good for like travelers, students, and those kinds of people that need something a little bit more professional and are also going to abuse their machine. This is the 14-inch version. So today what we want to find out is if the Dell Latitude is any good at all and if you should buy one yourself. <laughs> Let's get some specs out of the way really quick. This one comes with 8 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. It comes with a dedicated NVIDIA graphics card, a 1060 to be precise, which I'm pretty impressed about, and I'll get into that later on. It comes with a 256 gigabyte NVMe solid state drive, 14 inch FHD screen, non touch, and i5 processor. It is quite strong overall. It's not, you know, it doesn't have the biggest numbers. Again, 256 gig solid state drive. I mean, they could have maybe put like a like, 512 in there considering this is a, like a upwards of five to six hundred dollar machine but nevertheless i really like the specs io and performance on this thing now because it's a business laptop i'm not going to bother doing any kind of benchmarks on it because at the end of the day it's not meant for gaming and it will do all of your business related tasks just fine so just take it from me this thing is lightning quick it boots up fast it runs multiple windows and tasks and applications with no problems at all let's dive into some more details about the lcd so it is 14.1 inches it is full fhd full high definition uh, basically means it's a 1080p screen non-touch about 250 nits brightness i would say it actually airs a little bit closer to 300 in our testing but nevertheless um it's bright enough but because it's matte it doesn't have a whole lot of glare on it that said it could have been it could have been just like a touch brighter but it doesn't have any hdr doesn't have any kind of fancy things it does have some pretty decent viewing ratio or viewing angles on it because it's an ips display and it holds up you know with the blacks pretty true the you know very dark blacks very white whites so overall it's like it's like just a good color accurate panel not something that you're going to be like doing any kind of crazy video editing or photoshopping on although you could photoshop on it and i'll talk about that later too but nevertheless that's um it's an okay panel keyboard trackpad on it are absolutely phenomenal uh keyboard is backlit and trackpad doesn't ghost or anything like that everything is very tactile responsive there's not a whole lot of flex in the keyboard everything just feels really good and really accurate they did a very good job there as far as texture as far as materials and textures and that kind of thing, it's just a very strong kind of durable plastic. It's about a three and a quarter pound computer, I think. So it's like not like super lightweight or anything like that, but it's very travel friendly. And again, for a student or somebody that's looking to throw this thing in and out of a bag, maybe abuse it a little bit in an airport, in a classroom, that kind of thing, this thing will be absolutely perfect for that kind of use. Let's talk about input and output on this thing, which is actually quite impressive. So. On this side, we've got where you plug it in because it doesn't run on solar energy. You've also got an HDMI port, and you've got USB super speed, and then you've got a USB 3.0, USB-C 3.2, and it does support a display as well as charging it. So if you don't want to carry around Dell's stupid proprietary charger, you can use a USB-C charger on it, which is a nice touch. You do have a talking gigabit ethernet port there. I like that they added ethernet on this thing. I'm actually, you know, more laptops are coming without ethernet, and I kind of wish kind of wish that they had ethernet uh you've got a mini kensington lock here because everybody uses kensington lock two usb super speeds a trrrs jack basically it can support mics and set of headphones which you probably will want and then a micro sd card reader now they could have put in a full sd card reader but uh, you got micro so hey be happy with what you got i guess there's no kind of fancy features such as windows hello compatible camera fingerprint reader anything like that no what you just get is basically like a bare bones sort of like Toyota of laptops. This thing is just going to be able to withstand a lot of abuse and just overall be a kind of loyal companion for your computing needs. This thing is going to support Office, doing like Word, PowerPoint, Excel, Outlook, this kind of thing with no problem at all. And just in general, I think it's going to be really good for like, let's say a college student just needing something to get around and do some like documents and stuff with. Um, I don't, you could actually, you probably could do some like CAD work and stuff with this too, because it has a dedicated graphics card and also an i5 processor and the ability to upgrade the amount of RAM and the ability to upgrade the amount of storage in this thing. I think overall you could use this thing as like a bit of a, like a CAD machine, a Photoshop computer. Like if basically if you're a photographer and you want to edit on site, you could probably even do a little bit of compressed 4k with this computer as well in terms of video editing. Now, 
Editing video on a 14 inch computer is a little bit tough, but nevertheless, this thing could probably handle the load. And as far as doing things like audio editing, podcasts, editing some music, using this thing as like basically like a little tiny like work station in a studio type thing, I think it would be pretty ideal for that as well. Input and output on it will support things like switches and microphones and overall is going to allow you for some like decent flexibility when doing some uh, audio editing. And if you need to put a lot of effects on your audio timeline, such as like in Fruity Loops or any of those things, it should handle all of that with no problem. Problem. Same thing with Photoshop, editing raw, and putting effects on those pictures in, in, uh, as well. And because you've got stuff like USB-C, if you are doing some sort of like photography and you need some extra storage, you can just pop a little USB-C solid state drive on the side and you are good to go. Battery life on this thing is somewhere between like the 9 to 10 hour range, practically speaking. Um, so yeah, who is this computer for? Well, because of its build quality materials and I.O., I think this thing is going to be exceptional for travelers. I think it's going to be good for small business people or just business people in general, somebody that just needs like a sort of no frills laptop, but that will just hold up pretty well. Um, journalists, typists, students, whether you're in middle school, high school, college, uh, something like that. I think this is going to be an outstanding computer for students. Does have a webcam, by the way, built in at the top. Uh, normally, this is around the time that I would show you a uh, what the camera quality looks like. Um, so, yeah, okay, here it is. Here's a test of the webcam footage on the Dell Latitude 3420. So yeah, nothing great, 720p camera. Anyway, point is though is that it does have you know again no no frills, but um, this is going to be good for Photoshoppers doing you know some photography on site kind of thing. Um, wouldn't really say this is like a power editor computer for video. Um, I think this is good for like maybe like a mobile recording studio, doing some podcasting, that sort of thing. And it's not a gaming computer. You can probably play some Minecraft on it, maybe some Roblox, but you're not going to be able to play RDR2 on high settings or anything like that. Um, so yeah, do I recommend this Dell Latitude? For the price, eh, yeah, it's actually really not bad. That dedicated graphics card was kind of a kiss on the cheek, and frankly, I'd rather have that than a fingerprint scanner or a Windows Hello compatible camera. So, like, basically, if Dell's picking and choosing what I can and cannot have, I'm, I'm going to take the little bit of extra horsepower. Um, value, it's not exceptional value, but then again, nothing is these days. So, yes, great computer, should be very reliable. Um, I think if you buy one, you will absolutely love it. Uh, let us know what you think of the Dell Latitude. Uh, in the comment section. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, please like and subscribe, and we will be back with another video really soon.